Hello and welcome. My name is Kiana Hardy Butler and I am an adult services librarian at Akron Public Library. Today you will be hearing from three presenters who are board members with Nani Summit County. Nani Summit County is a nonprofit organization operating in Akron, Ohio that works to achieve equitable services and treatment for more than 15 million Americans nationwide who live with severe mental illnesses. It also provides support and education for the families of those afflicted. So to start, you will hear from Board President Robert Hunt. He will share his personal story with you. Following him are the Executive Directors Leslie Stoyer and Vaughn Rett, who will discuss the topic of mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as share uh, resources that NAMI provides to the public. Um, so let's start. Um, please welcome Board President Robert Hunt. Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Hunt and I am the board president of NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness in Summit County. It's a pleasure to come before you this afternoon. And I want to start off by telling you a story, a story that will captivate you, and at times it will sadden you, but the outcome is so good because I had the help from NAMI, Summit County. The Akron Beacon Journal contacted me about June of 2020, if by chance you want to Google the story. And they asked me, they said, how is it that an individual that is not a clinician, not a physician, okay, could be at, at, the, at the helm of the National Alliance on Mental Illness? And I told them the reason I am there is because of my passion, my passion to help a loved one. And now I'll tell you about my story. It was in the fall of 2000. My wife and I and family were, were on a family reunion in Dallas, Texas, just having fun down there. And all of a sudden, I received a phone call from the hotel and they said they wanted to speak to me. And I said, yes, what is it about? And they told me at that time, we have your son in Jamaica, New York. And he's in the psych ward. And at that time, I thought it was just a prank call. And I hung the phone up and told my wife, you know what? Well, they never stop now, do they? And I would say about 10 minutes later, my middle son contacted me. He called me and he said, Dad, did you receive a call from New York? I said, yes, son. I said, some prank call. He said, the next time that call comes in, answer the call. So when I answered it, they informed me that my son was in Jamaica, New York, which is in Queens, and that he was in the psych ward in the hospital. My wife and I at that time, we flew from, from Dallas, Texas, up to Kennedy Airport, which was just wild at that time. I never forget it, everything was just going on so. But we made our way to Jamaica, New York. And when I got in there, I, I saw my son and, and I'm saying, what's going on? And he looked at me and said, he said, Dad, well, I'm hearing things. I said, yeah, you are, you're hearing my voice. Get it together, cause we're going back home. Now, let me tell you, why it is so important at this particular incident. My son at that time was just finishing up high school. He was a straight A student. And at the same time, he was working at Goodyear, Akron, Ohio on Mahogany Road. Now I was working in corporate, doing pretty good for myself, but I had trouble keeping up with what he was making. I mean, he was just doing that well. And then when he went to Ohio State, he was on the dean's list consistently to a point where Cummins Engines had contacted him because he was also a page down in Columbus and said that they wanted to put him in Harvard University. And we had some help there and for a gentleman who is, at this time, he's a senator, Senator Sykes had focused in on my son as well. But he was just doing so well. He was also the 
uh, chairman of the black accountants down at Ohio State. And he was voted most likely to succeed in high school. So with all this going on, when I got the call, I said, wait a minute, something here is wrong. So when I took him back home and asked him questions, he said he was just hearing voices and something was going wrong. At that time, I, I wanted to really help my son. I wanted to, I wanted to fix it. So what did I do? As any parent would do, I threw money at it. I wanted to fix it. I wanted to fix it so bad that I went into our savings, my wife and I, to what you would is known as the 401k or and I got to a point with that. I was spending so much money trying to fix it that my wife came to me one day and she said, Robert, I said, yes. She said, I'm going to have to separate our funds. I said, wait a minute, wh wh why is that? She said, because we're going to end up in the poorhouse the way you're going. I said, yeah, but, but I love him, but, 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 but don't you love him? Yes, I love him. But at the same time, we have to use common sense. And at this point here, we're not using common sense. We're going to have to separate because you're throwing money, throwing money, throwing money at the problem. So at that point there, I went to Cleveland. I was trying all kind of different psychologists, psychiatrists, just trying to get some help. So I ended up in Cleveland. And at the time, it was with a Dr. Howe, if I could mention his name. I think he's retired now. And he told me, he said, well, there's an organization out there called NAMI. I said, what is that? He said, this is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. It is a national organization, but you have one in Summit County. There's one in Cahawka County. I said, well, I live Summit, and I'll check that out. Why do you bring that up? He said, because they know how to help you. They know how to deal somewhat with this problem that you're having with your son and with the family and what you're going through. So I said at that time, well, 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 good, and I appreciate you you're telling me this. I said, after I've spent all this money, and he looked at me and said, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take my check now, too. Okay, so I said, well, 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 thanks, because I still had to write his check, of course. But when I got back to Summit County, my wife contacted NAMI, and the first person she ran into was, was Ron Rett, who was the, one of the executive directors and Leslie Pollitt. So she ended up going through the program family to family. And she would come back telling me about it. Oh, what a great program and the things that I've learned in family to family and how to deal, somewhat deal with the situation that we're going through with our son. And she said, I'd like you to go through it. I said, oh, no, I'm, I'm OK. I'm the A type. I'll, I'll, I'll get through it. But at the same time, I didn't know exactly how to address my son by being so strong and both of us, you know, being the A-type, hey, we want to get there. So look, hey son, you need to come out of this. You need to do this. You need to face what's going on. You need to snap out of it. But he didn't. And at that point there, I decided, after getting beat up, as most of us guys are, we have to go through. I said, let me see what this family to family is all about. So I went through the course and it was just amazing. The things that they taught me and how to deal with my son and how to deal with any individual dealing with that have a mental challenge, a mental illness. I began to learn, I began to be quiet. I began to listen to what he was saying based upon what I was being taught. And after I finished with the program, I decided at that time to go down to Columbus and to be certified, to be one of the instructors for family to family. Has it been easy? No. Um, is my son better? Yes. And the things that we have been going through consistently. I've been through such situations as, you know, self-medication, as dealing with addiction and dealing with those types of, of things and even getting in trouble with the law because of the fact that he wanted to make it so bad and couldn't understand why he wasn't making it, why he wasn't doing as well. 
but that was due to the psychotic break in 2000, and this was 2021, so I've been dealing with this situation 21 years. Oh, but I'm not going to stop now. I'm here not only to help my son, but to help others so that they won't have to go through what I went through, so they won't have to suffer the things that I did, so that they can know that they are not alone. I want you to know this day that you are not alone. And I want to welcome you at the Summit County Library to the NAMI session. And I want to thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. Robert's going to... Robert's going to join us. Uh, Ron and I are camera shy, so we're not going to be on camera. <laughs> but uh, he, um, Robert's going to join us um, to talk about our, our uh, program here today. We're just going to give you some um, uh, statistics to start out with. And did you know that one in five adults in the United States experience mental illness in an average year? And now what we're finding, uh, and this is a new statistic from our national organization, that one in three adults are reporting symptoms of anxiety and depression. And, um, you know, that's due in part to COVID and the pandemic and the isolation that's happening around us. Whenever we present that statistic, a lot of times people are, are really very surprised at that. You know, they may think maybe one in 20, one in 10, uh, but then when it comes down to the one in five or actually the one in three experiencing anxiety or depression, I, I think they feel comfort in that though, because a lot of them are feeling that. Now, if you just look at these, and, and if you can make out, the, I know you can make out the images, if you can make out some of the names there of some very, very famous people, and the question is, what do these people have in common? And the answer is, they all have a diagnosable mental illness. Um, some of them we suspect of having mental illness just because it was so long ago. Um, for example, Abraham Lincoln, there's been a lot of studies done on his writings, um, which evidences either a, a diagnosis of bipolar disorder or a major depressive disorder. Um, but all of them have experienced at one point in time uh, a mental illness, but all of them were very successful and very influential um, in, to the world um, in spite of, and maybe even due to, the fact of their mental illness. Next, uh, we want to add, uh, give you a little bit more information about NAMI in Summit County. Our office number, 330-252-1188. If you can take some time there, to write that down because sometimes, or even enter it into your phone, because sometimes when you need it the most, you're fumbling around. Uh, the ADM Board Crisis Hotline, which runs 24-7, 330-434-9144, and then this will be coming up later as well. Uh, the Suicide Prevention Hotline, and my recommendation is to not only write down the voice line, but also the text line. So the voice line is 800-273-TALK, and, but then right along with that is uh, the text line, which is if you use the numeral for hope, so the numeral for hope, not F-O-R or F-O-U-R, but numeral for hope to 741-741. But putting both of those down, in fact, entering those whenever you're not in the crisis will move things along very, uh, very uh, smoothly when you do, because then all you have to do is look up that on your phone and then uh, I connect. And so you'll see on there, um, one of NAMI's taglines, you are not alone. Um, and that held true through uh, the coronavirus um, pandemic, um, still holds through. Um, that was pre-COVID pre and post-COVID um, and during COVID as well. But we're gonna touch upon um, a couple of different things that you can do to um, to manage your time if you're in distress, um, if you're languishing, if you're feeling anxiety, if you're feeling some depressed mood. Um, some of those things are. So, and during COVID, this is what uh, we recommend. 
So managing how you consume your information, following healthy daily routines, taking care of yourself through exercise and movement, practicing relaxation, relaxing, relaxing in the moment, excuse Just me. Just relax. <laughs> uh, do meaningful things with your free time. Stay connected with others and maintain your social networks. Okay, if I could just say one thing, we'll see some of the acronyms, and you may not know what those are, we're gonna explain those also the best we can. You saw ADM, alcohol, drug, and mental health, just to bring that up, and I know that everybody see acronyms, what the heck are they? So we'll try to help them with that also. I just gotta throw this in, that why do we use so many acronyms? Because we're from Akron. <laughs> That's a good one, Ryan. All right. So managing how you consume information, um, we recommend um, that you equip yourself with information from credible sources. So up there on the screen um, are some credible sources when it comes to uh, your mental health, your physical health, and how you're dealing with COVID and where you're getting your COVID information. Rather than getting it through um, Google searches or social media, uh, check the CDC, check uh, WHO, check SAMHSA, which is Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or the NIH, National Institute of Health. And then of course you can always check NAMI.org. Yes, www.nami.org because all of those, if, when that, when that uh, website comes on, when the screen comes on, in the upper right hand corner is a search box. You can put in there a diagnosis, you can put in there a medication, you can put in there any other symptoms or anything like that. What the advantage of that versus just going to Google is, is that has been researched by mental health professionals. And as well as all of those other four sites that are up there on the screen too, they all have search boxes also and they all do the same thing. But again, it's, it's um, vetted information and it's accurate information and they're credible sources. So be selective how you consume your news, especially during times of crisis. Um, people get, get overwhelmed with the amount of news, crisis situations, negativeness that is coming from not just social media, but different news sources, that 24-7 news cycle that we're in, both on the television and on the internet, is very, very overwhelming. So limit it. Um, what, how, how do you limit it? Well, go... It, it, a, a certain area of time during the day. I'm only going to spend a half hour on the news today. I'm only going to read this newspaper. I'm not going to read five different newspapers. Um, and again, credible sources. Also, too, monitor yourself. If you feel like you're getting agitated um, as, as you are uh, experiencing some of this, then that's a good indicator as well. And maybe you need that break. And then we like to keep in our regular, healthy, daily routines, especially if you're working from home um, or you're, you're stuck at home, you're isolated at home. Try to, even though you're at home, work in a routine. Get dressed in the morning. Take that shower in the morning. Go down and work in uh, one designated place. Um, and try to keep yourself in that regular routine, connect with your loved ones, uh, get up and, and, and have some breaks. Um, the, the weather has opened up here in Northeast Ohio. So if you're in the middle of the day and you've been working online and taking 50 Zoom calls the way many of us do, take that break, go out on the patio, go out for a quick walk, um, just to break up the monotony of the day. Um, and practice good hygiene, practice eating well, and prioritize your sleep. If I could just say this here, one of the things that we have to do, at least what works for me, I'll put it to you that way, is that you have to have me time, okay? And that's the thing that, you know, if you're married, you're with your significant one, you have to take out time for yourself. Sure, you love that individual to have, but in turn, you know, you may have to just read a book or go to a certain room. Sometimes it's just good with that. If nothing else, those of you a dog lover say, talk to the dog. All right, so. I do that a lot. 
And then take care, we talked about exercising and movement. Well, that doesn't mean you have to go out and train for a marathon. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to um, develop a, an interest in yoga or whatever. Um, it can, those are good things, but um, just walking, doing stretching, turn on some music and dance around the house. Um, Try doing yoga. You don't have to go to a yoga studio. You can do yoga on um, uh, the television. Um, there are YouTube uh, articles on um, or videos on yoga. Um, and, you know, doing some cardiovascular exercise helps to get your heart rate up a little bit. Um, you will find that just doing a little bit of this, um, when you get yourself out there, um, the, the more times you do it, the more frequently you do it, the better that you feel. Make it a priority and do not give any excuse for not doing it. If you find out later on in the day, well, I normally do that at, at seven o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning or whatever it is. Regardless, if you've missed, missed that little block, go for it. You, you must maintain that. And then we talk about um, relaxing and practicing relaxing. Um, this is hard for a lot of people. It is really difficult to sit and clear your mind and uh, focus on nothing. Um, don't focus on your problems. Don't focus on the fact that you're isolated. Don't focus on work. Just sitting there. Um, lots of meditation apps out there. Some free, some uh, require a subscription, um, but there's a couple of them um, up there on, on the screen. Um, Headspace, Calm, uh, Simple Habit. These are all apps that you can put on your phone or put on your tablet, and it teaches you how to meditate and how to be in control of um, uh, your own mind and clear, clear the monotony that's going on in your head. Um, and then there's uh, just, controlling and slowing your breathing, um, which also really helps to calm yourself and lower lower your um, lower your anxiety level. If I could say something else about that breathing, it means so much. I appreciate you saying that, Leslie, because if you just tried it, you don't have to be dramatic about it. Just taking all the air you have in and then letting that air out. And just do that like three simple times, you'll see how your heart rate slows down. It just helps you to control your breathing, especially when someone is getting on your nerves. You know, walk away from that situation. Go into your breathing, okay? Do, do not let that other individual upset you. Just because somebody says something about you doesn't make it so. Go to your breathing. And then doing meaningful things with your time, and meaningful, what is that? Something that you enjoy. Um, so reading a book, uh, listening to an audio book, doing a puzzle. Uh, we did a lot of uh, puzzles during uh, the, uh, the shutdown and when we were all quarantined. Um, playing games, um, and, and you know, now with technology, you can play games with somebody across the country. Um, so uh, we actually, uh, at Thanksgiving, were able to get together with my nephews and uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, and the kids played games for about five hours on Zoom. And uh, they had a great time. They got to share um, in the company of their cousins when they couldn't be physically with them. Take some time to analyze here. With COVID and so many people working from home, they do not have, or at least for, for me, uh, I used to do a fair amount of traveling. And then with that travel, that was my break time. That was some time to, to do some of these things, to do thinking about things that is not work related. But when you're in COVID here and you're working from home, too many people have gotten close to 24 seven and maybe not a whole 24, but they don't have any time to turn that off. And that commute time that used to be good for that to, to relax, they don't, they don't plan that in anymore. So you really have to take the time to do that. And people just, you know, they, they just think, well, I gotta be working all the time. And then 
uh, staying connected with others. I uh, just told the Thanksgiving story about my kids and, um, and, and how they were able to maintain um, being social without being physical. Now that the restrictions are lifting, um, try to get out um, and see the people that you love, the people that you enjoyed spending time with, uh, do it safely. Um, hopefully you've all been vaccinated um, and you can do those things safely. But, um, you know, meetings, um, maybe we're going back into person here too. But, you know, reach out, reach out to um, your el elderly res relatives, your elderly neighbors, um, and just keep and maintain your social networks. So now we're gonna transition into when you really need to seek professional help. Um, so we've just gone over some stuff with COVID and how to keep on an even keel and, and, and keep your, um, your mood um, at, you know, at an even, even temperament. Um, but some of the, sometimes those things don't work and you need to seek out professional help. So when, when um, in adults do we need to seek out professional help? Um, there's a list of them up here, um, confused thinking, not able to focus, um, prolonged depression. And when we talk about depression, we're not just talking about I'm, I'm, I'm having a blue day, I'm not feeling well today. Um, it just, you know, I'm having a down day. We're talking about prolonged um, sadness and irritability. Um, generally, I think clinically they say uh, for longer than two weeks. Feeling extreme highs and extreme lows. Uh, excessive fears and anxiety beyond your normal fear. Um, just excessively worrying about things. Socially withdrawing, which was easy to do during COVID. Um, but now that we're opening up again, um, are you able to go out and do the things that you love to do? Are you not finding joy in those things any longer? If you're not finding joy in them, then it's time to get some professional help. And there's uh, some other, si uh, some other um, signs and symptoms there too. We don't have to read all of them to you, but um, watch your um, self-medication, uh, watch that alcohol consumption. Um, the you know use of any illicit drugs and all of that, those are times where you need to um, seek professional help. And certainly if you are thinking of self-harm um, or harming someone else, then that is a, a critical emergency and we'll get into that in a little bit. If well, I can, can, oh, go ahead. If I can just, just say this here, when you're seeking professional help, please get the education behind that, especially when you go labeling someone, or you may hear a word of a person who's in depression, a person that has schizophrenia, PTSD, okay? So those types of things there, find out about that post-traumatic stress disorder before you go labeling that individual. And therefore, you know, you'll, be, you'll feel much better about that situation and all of a sudden you wouldn't be labeling someone and making them feel worse than what they already are feeling, especially dealing with stigma, which we'll cover a little bit later. One of the things that when somebody first contacts NAMI, we advise them is, are you journaling now? And oftentimes they are not. And we said, it, we strongly, strongly recommend for you to start journaling. When you start journaling, then you may observe some of these different uh, things that we've listed here and then, and then become more aware of that. The other thing with journaling is, one is uh, at, you're writing down factual observations. You may be able to de devise a pattern of this out of uh, over time, as, especially for the third one there, feelings of extreme highs and lows. For somebody that may be experiencing bipolar disorder, you can figure out then what the cycle is. But along with that too is when I write down the, these things in your journal. And then the other thing is uh, then also you can put that aside because so many times I gotta remember this for tomorrow, I gotta remember this for tomorrow. Write it down in your journal and then go and get some rest. Um, these are signs and symptoms to look for in um, your older children and pre-adolescents. Substance abuse, a, a big one. Um, excessive complaints of physical ailments, um, stomach ache, headache, 
um, aches and pains um, that's out of the ordinary for, for your child. Um, defiance of authority, whether it's truancy, theft, vandalism, um, uh, intense fear of waking. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the lack of eating, lack of sleeping, um, frequent anger, outbursts, that type of thing. And then younger kids, um, changes in your school and school performance for them, poor grades, despite the fact that they're putting forth strong effort, um, excessive worry and anxiety for them, um, so much so that sometimes they may not even want to go to school or go to bed, um, hyperactivity, persistent nightmares, um, disobedience, temper tantrums. Um, aggression, aggression towards themselves or other family members. One of the things too is let's say if they're up late at night, you know, kind of like with with these nightmares and everything, it's just like go to sleep. You know, you know, you're gonna need your sleep here so that you can go to school in the morning. Maybe just take a minute or two to ask them, so what's that about? What's going on? And then that may that may go a long way to, to calming them and so that they can actually get some sleep. So we're going to go through a little bit um, how to access services here in Summit County. Um, so uh, first and foremost, um, we, uh, we got to know if it's an emergency. And if it's an emergency, what do you do? You call 911. Um, if uh, you need to call 911, what we do is we recommend that you ask for a CIT officer, Crisis Intervention Team. That means that they were trained come in and de-escalate the situation. It also is code to ditch dispatch that it's a mental health emergency. So again, 911, ask for a CIT officer. And when are you in an emergency? How about some suicide warning signs right there? So uh, talking about wanting to die, that's, that's a real important thing. And in fact, if somebody expresses that, or to kill, uh, you know, uh, to kill themselves. That it's we strongly, strongly recommend if a person's talking like that, do not leave them alone. Uh, also, looking for a way to kill oneself if they have some type of a t uh, some type of a plan, especially in the recent purchase, like buying a gun or something like that. Um, if they if they have expressed, hey, there's no reason for me to live. Uh, are feeling uh, trapped or being a burden to others, that's a big uh, tip off. Again, as Leslie had mentioned there too, uh, the alcohol and drugs, yeah, yeah, monitor that if, uh, you know, whether they are overt about it or hiding it. And then uh, just this uh, acting agitated as well and just say, stop that, you know, it's like, no, why, why are you doing that? And then the extremes of sleeping too little or too much and along with that too for the eating, eating too little or too much when they're off of their regular pattern and they're on to death at both ends, at both extremes of the spectrum, uh, those are some warning signs. Uh, feeling uh, isolated, a lot of times the teachers and, and so forth can pick up on this. Uh, and then uh, displaying extreme mood swings, that's another one that's a tip off again, you know, if you're journaling or writing some of this stuff down uh, again, the lifeline on line, and then we're going to uh, go right into the text line then as well. Uh, the lifeline is 1-800-273-TALK, and I'll write along with that. The crisis text line is the numeral for HOPE to 741-741. If I could just say this also, in dealing with that suicide, if by chance that person says that to you, just to reiterate that, take it very serious, especially if they have gone through some type of trauma, okay, so that they, they've lost someone very dear to them, and they may speak, you know, out of turn and just say, you know, I feel like hurting myself in some way. Please get the help right away. Thank you. One other thing, too, with the crisis text line is with the younger people, you know, they like to text more and more and more and everything. Sometimes, they don't feel like talking if they're considering suicide, but they may text it. So that's why the text line is so important. So uh, another um, 
resource that we have here in Summit County is the ADM, and, and as Robert said, ADM is the Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board here in Summit County, and there's a Psychiatric Emergency Services uh, it's located right behind St. Thomas Hospital. Um, they have, a, it's a crisis stabilization unit, unit. you can um, go there, uh, get help for your mental health, take a loved one there, get help for their mental health. Um, and like I said, uh, crisis stabilization, it's, it's an emergency uh, facility for psychiatric emergencies. And if it's not to the level of an emergency, then uh, here's some other uh, resources then as well, is of course our office is 330-252-1188, except that's not manned 24-7, so that shouldn't be your primary. But then along with that, we do have the website that is 24 hours. And then uh, you can uh, also send us an email, info at namisummit.org. And for the general, it's www.nami.org. And like I mentioned too, is they also have that search box on there. So that's something that, that you can use as a resource as well. So some other local resources, um, right on our website, namisummit.org, um, if you click on the resources tab, this document will come up. It's the Summit County, Ohio Directory of Mental Health Services, and it has most, not all, but most of the area mental health services in that um, booklet. I think it's about 36 pages long, and uh, in there is not just the name of the um, organization, but the types of services that they offer, the types of insurance that they take, whether or not it's on a sliding fee scale, and of course the location, the telephone number, and the um, email to access them. So again, great resource uh, on our resources tab, exclusive here to uh, Summit County. And then if you go on the ADM um, website, the Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board um, website, uh, these are some of the different um, public agencies, and ADM helps fund all of these as well. So you will see all of the different um, uh, tabs on here of our different agencies, and then you can click on them, and again, get more detailed information on them. We are blessed in Summit County to have so many really good services. If there's any caveat to that, is that they're not well connected, and there's not good transitions in between them. So that's some of the things then to, to, to take it. Uh, yeah, take into consideration. And we can help. That's one of the things we do in Summit County, too, is we help people navigate through the system um, where they might get the, um, the, the care that they're looking for, um, whether it's for uh, a child, an adolescent, an adult, someone with um, uh, both mental health and um, developmental disorders, etc. because there are specialties all over. Um, and again, it's just kind of hard to, especially if you're in crisis, to um, kind of um, get all that information, sort through it, and pick the one that you think is best. There are also addiction medicine resources um, here, and, and of course a lot of people with mental health disorders um, have co-occurring substance abuse disorders, or they self-medicate with, me with um, um, uh, different substances. So here's a list of some of them that are local here in Summit County. I think the statistic is pretty close to 70% of, of people with a mental illness will self-medicate. So that's considered co-occurring disorders. Yeah, and I have to bring up once again, don't forget, one in five. If you're around five people right now, five, six people, just, just take a look at that, that they may be going through something right now. Okay, that may be an eating disorder. Don't, think, don't focus just then on, on one thing. Okay, but this addiction is very serious, and we have a lot of help for you there. Now, we also have some residential treatment centers, too, for um, dual diagnosis. Uh, they're listed there, and these are in Northeast Ohio. There are others, of course, throughout the state, um, but these are uh, in Northeast Ohio, IBH, which used to be the Interval Brotherhood home. It's gone, gone to uh, just IBH now. The Bluffs, Highland Springs, and Glen Bay, those are, again, um, dual diagnosis, Glen Bay is, um, I believe, uh, just focuses on drug and alcohol and not dual diagnosis. 
So those are the adult systems. That's how to um, navigate through the adult systems. And again, NAMI is here to help you. Call our office, we will do that. And But we've also got a youth system here in Summit County. And again, really awesome resources um, for our youth system. And um, that takes place over at Akron Children's. They have a psychi psychiatric um, intake response center, PERC, for short, again, another acronym, P-I-R-C, um, and they do um, their intake um, first through uh, telephone screening, um, and then they will ask you to uh, come to the facility um, if they deem that um, they need to see you right away. But there's some information on this soft slide on how to get in there, but that is the Behavioral Health Emergency System here in Summit County for our youth. And we've got it right here in downtown Akron. I'm gonna give a, a couple sentences and give credit to them is it used to be, and I'll take a bit, let me, let me make that personal. My own son, I took them, I took him down to emergency services before PERC was created, and we just sat and sat and sat, and they're looking at more of their great if you break your arm. But as far as the emergency room, uh, they weren't really good as far as the uh, psychiatric. So this bypasses a lot of that, and then uh, psychiatric emergency goes directly into getting some type of treatment. And we have some top-notch people here um, uh, that have been recruited from across the United States that are right here in at Akron Children's for Behavioral Health. Um, and so here are some outpatient services also. Um, we've got the Orr Family Behavioral Health Center, which is in, at Akron Children's. Um, we have Child Guidance and Family Solutions, Greenleaf, Belfair, um, Shelter Care, um, and just a, just a whole list of different um, resources here in Summit County for youth and adolescent. Now we're gonna get into NAMI Summit County um, and what we do. Uh, and um, we should have started out with this. Um, I think uh, Robert uh, referenced it a little bit um, in, when he was speaking about his own personal situation, but we are not clinicians. Uh, we don't have any mental health background other than our own personal experience. And you'll find that with many people um, at, in uh, in the NAMI family, um, not just here in Summit County, but throughout the country. And there is a NAMI presence in every state in the country. Um, and we are the local affiliate for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And there is also a NAMI state organization, NAMI Ohio. Um, and there are 40 affiliates across the state of, uh, of Ohio. We focus in on Summit County. So that's kind of our little niche of expertise how you um, access the system, um, some uh, information about, um, you know, we can help with drug courts, the mental health courts, and um, uh, assisted outpatient treatment, which is the new day court, it's a probate action. Lots and lots of stuff and resources out there. Um, well, I, I was just gonna say that a lot of people, um, well, let's say as far as going back to the support and, and so forth that we have, uh, people that have the lived experience. So it's one thing to have all the knowledge and the theory and, and all the background to that, but these are people that can actually talk about how, what you're experiencing with the lived experience. And where do we do that? We do that in our family support or our NAMI connection. And NAMI tends to um, divide things up in, based on need. So family support is just that. It, it, and we define family very loosely. You don't have to be blood relative, but um, if you have a loved one with a mental health um, uh, condition and you want to get support for the for the issues that you're dealing with, family support is where you want to go. If you yourself are experiencing a mental health condition, your needs are a little bit different. So we have another group called Mommy Connection for support with that, um, and then. Same with our education programs. And uh, these are, are the five that we have here in Summit County. Um, our flagship program, um, evidence-based, all five of these are evidence-based, by the way, family to family. And I think Robert spoke really, really well when he talked about his own personal situation and how much he got out of the family to family course because it taught him how to um, 
deal with the situations that were going on in his family and deal, deal with his um, son. The strength of a lot of our education classes is that they're interactive. So many, in fact, we've seen some of these, how they've evolved from being so much lecture and information to being more interactive so that people actually participate in that. If I could just speak on family to family just, just one more time, people come up to me all the time and, and they want to know about how is it that I deal with my son? How, what is it that you're saying to them? I know that there's a lot of people out there hurting. Family to family is offered. They're gonna let you know even at what time to have something going on. Okay, please reach out because it's something I guarantee you that will help you, that will help your family members to achieve your goal with your loved one to be more successful. So, um, oh, let's, oh, let's no, that's okay. Let's go back. Um, uh, just, to, just to reiterate, family to family, we um, we run that year round. Um, so, I think we're in our third or fourth um, course uh, so far this year. Um, third, I believe. And uh, we just started um, our new one. We do require registration for that program because it fills up very, very quickly. Um, everything that we offer is offered for free. So our education programs and all the related materials that go along with, with that um, are all offered for free. Um, we do require registration for education, not for our support group meetings. You can do that on a drop-in basis. Then we've got NAMI Basics. NAMI Basics we do strictly online now. Um, and it is um, it, it done at your leisure on NAMI.org. And um, that, that education program is focused on the caregivers of children and adolescents with behavioral health disorders. And um, it's a six part course and uh, you can get all kinds of good information about that. Very similar to our family to family. Likewise, Homefront is offered online exclusively, and um, Homefront is offered also at NAMI.org four times a year. It is for the family members of veterans or active duty military. And again, strictly online does require registration. Peer to peer, remember we talked about, we divide things up based on need. Peer to peer is an education recovery program for people that are living with a mental health diagnosis. We help you to formulate your own personal recovery plan. We don't tell you what to do. We help you recognize your signs and symptoms and um, when those signs and symptoms are exacerbated and what to do. Um, and then Ending the Silence um, is a newer program for us where we go into the schools um, in a 50 minute class period and educate uh, middle school, high school, college age students about signs and symptoms of distress in their peers and in themselves and then where to get help. Okay, programs for kids. Uh, Leslie is the expert as far as creative kids goes, uh, but look, since I'm talking right now, this to explain like the housewarming, that's, this was created from someone that saw that as they are moving from a group home to their f apartment for the very, very first time. That uh, they're kind of a little overwhelmed with, you know, trying to get the pots and pans and dishes and silverware and everything. We have a case manager for someone that's doing that transition. We can provide the pots and pans and silverware and, bed and bedding and so forth, about $200 worth for someone doing making that transition. Uh, the, uh, the Needy Souls is again uh, because someone, one of our case, one of our uh, board members, was cutting through the uh, lobby and saw some of the clients sitting there with holes in their shoes in the middle of winter. And we could do better than that. So what we do is we require that the case manager, uh, if the client does not have the means. To do the uh, to be able to afford uh, getting their new shoes, we will assist them with that. Uh, you want to do creative kids? Yeah, and, and all of these these programs, by the way, are um, are were designed um, because there was a need in Summit County. So these are not national programs; these are confined right here to Summit County. Um, there are parameters to accessing them. Um, primarily, it's based upon financial need. 
and um, Creative Kids is one of those where we partnered up with a bunch of different businesses throughout um, Summit County to offer funding for extracurricular activities um, to help them advance um, their, their recovery with their behavioral disorder. One of the big ones um, that we get a lot of times is um, uh, the martial arts. Um, the kids do really, really well through the martial arts, and we've got a couple of kids that have come back for repeat funding for us. Um, and it started out, you know, in the very beginning class, and are working their way up to their black belts right now. It's a creative outlet for them. Yeah, and then um, I think we we breezed over hair care, which is um, another program that again um, was based out of a need here. Um, and we partnered up with the Akron Barber College and Beyond Expectation Barber College and case managers can take their clients there um, once every eight weeks and get a haircut, a shave, a hairstyle, shampoo, um, and NAMI pays the bill for that. So again, just based on needs, um, but things that a lot of us take for granted in the community um, things that we are able to offer for our kids or are offered to our loved ones. Um, and these are just, like I said, um, uh, where we formulated or we found a need and we formulated a response to that need. How many people do you think we've covered with that needy souls and, and, and haircuts? What would you oh, say? Oh boy, boy, I, you yeah, know, it, it, um, you put me on the spot, but I actually do have that because we write grants yeah. for these programs, so I have all the stats on that. But um, yeah, before COVID hit, we were doing about um, 500 pairs of shoes. Yeah. Um, we were doing 10 annually, yes. annually, yeah. Um, housewarming, we probably um, uh, doing three of those um, per week. Um, and uh, and then hair care um, again. I think you run around five to six hundred of those a year. About ten a year. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's right. Nami local. That's, that's Nami. Nami. Absolutely. And then the last part of our mission, which is that three-part mission: support, education, and advocacy. And advocacy we do on a three levels. Um, we do it at the national level, we do it at the state level, and of course here locally. Um, perfect example of the national level is um, uh, a new telephone number. Um, you know, we've got the suicide prevention hotline. That number in 2022, uh, July of 2022, is going to switch over to 988. Real simple number to remember, uh, but if you're in crisis for mental health, 988 will be that new number. How did that come to be? Well, NAMI was one of several different organizations that lobbied um, a, in a bipartisan effort um, to get that passed by Congress. Um, and we did that last year. We are very, very proud of that. We can't wait till things are up and implemented here um, in Summit County, but it's actually gonna be a national program across um, the country. And our NAMI national organization asked all of us to rally the troops and contact our local legislators um, to get that passed. Um, state level. One of the big things NAMI did on a state level is our state, um, uh, NAMI Ohio, asked us, um, oh, back several years ago when the Affordable Care Act was being uh, uh, enacted, um, asked us to uh, lobby for um, Medicaid expansion. And we did that. We contacted, again, our legislators here in Ohio, and we knew that that was so important for people to get mental health care. The people that were living um, at 140% above the poverty line were not able to get insurance and therefore not able to get their mental health needs taken care of. So we lobbied for that and got that passed. Here's the current effort right now, and that's contacting your state legislator and asking your state legislator to, uh, excuse me, your, your Senate, state senator, to uh, support the, right now they're going through the budget. And one of the things they're looking at is possibly reducing the number of people on the local alcohol drug addiction, I, I should have uh, given that over to you, Robert, uh, with the Alcohol and Drug Addiction Mental Health Services Board. There's some legislation that's looking at maybe reducing some of those 
we need to, to not only have a, 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 a very good, uh, robust uh, uh, board, but also to have that very representative, including the clients themselves. Who better knows what services are needed than the, than the clients actually receiving the services? So that's one of the efforts, state efforts right now. Yeah, actually, we just sent out a bunch of information yep. on that yesterday. Um, so uh, if you're, list, uh, if you're um, looking to um, help with that effort, please contact our office. We'll give you more information. And then on local level, what we do um, is, you know, I think we've explained pretty well that we help people navigate the, the um, resources here in Summit County. Um, we've also, we also sit on the advisory boards for our mental health courts here and for our um, probate court. Um, and um, we are called to the table because we have a great working relationship with all of the different agencies as well as the ADM board. We are called to the table um, as, as representatives of family members and clients that have mental health conditions. Um, and because people recognize the importance of what NAMI offers. If I can say this here, we love success stories. And don't think just for a moment that they're, they stay in that addiction. You know, they have to hit rock bottom before they, they see a change. There are, there are individuals out there that consistently are trying, that have relapsed, that have had psychotic breaks, but they haven't given up. And we need you not to give up on them. So all that said, how do we fund ourselves? Um, and we do just that. We are self-funded. All of our programs are either run through grants or our operating um, costs. And one of the big things that we do to be able to fund all of our operations is our NAMI walks. And this year it's gonna be on October 9th. We're going to do it virtually because of the pandemic. We understand that things are starting to open up now, but we don't know what October is going to bring. So we're gonna be continue to keep that as a virtual event, but it's our national day of hope. And um, it is a fundraising and a stigma busting um, event. And we're asking for people to help us raise our goal this year, which is $105,000. Whoops. There we go. Um, and so what does NAMI walk support? NAMI Summit County and NAMI supports the one in five who experience mental illness and the five in five who are affected by it. You are not alone. Remember we said that right at the outset. From every corner of the country, for every age and every background, we walk on the streets or in our hearts in a time of challenge and change. We are united even when we appear alone. Mental health is not for some, mental health is for all. Huge theme um, ongoing through NAMI Summit County. Chris Hubbard is a NAMI ambassador, a NAMI national ambassador. So we have the good fortune that he actually plays for the Cleveland Browns. So he is very outspoken and he talks about, as Robert just mentioned here too, success stories. He talks about his own battle with his own mental illness. So uh, we were so disappointed last year, we had him lined up to speak to a large group and then of course COVID hit and then we had to postpone that again for this year. So we're hopeful that next year that we can have him address us at, at our on, uh, uh, annual meeting. And so there's more information. I know we, we sprinkled it throughout this presentation. There's our information for you. Um, at this point, I think we have a few minutes left um, and we're able to take any questions if anybody has any questions. Okay. No questions. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, wrap up by just talking about our board, our wonderful mm -hmm. board, if you'll mm -hmm. help me do that. We talk about we're not clinicians, although I'm going to school now to, to find out more and, and just do some things. But at the same time, we do have clinicians. Okay, we do have physicians. So if you could just say something about our board, I would appreciate that because they work very hard along with you. I appreciate it. If I can uh, add one qualifying term, caring clinicians. Yes. They are ones that are very, very interested in helping people and they're, they, they, just, they just exude that. 
Yeah, so our board is made up of um, 15 individuals and uh, every one of them has a passion for what our cause is. Um, they do this as volunteers. They are not paid to be on our board. Um, and they all are actively engaged in helping us um, become the organization, be the organization that we are, and that we are right now, and that we're looking forward to becoming. We just finished our strategic plan for the next couple of years, and we're working on that, and we're working that plan hard. And um, yeah, we have a fantastic board, fantastic. Very good, right. thank you. And yes. I just want you to know I'm proud to, to, to be the, your president. Thank you. Well, we're glad to have you. We, we, sure, we sure are. Yep. We sure are. So we thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, we ended a little little um, earlier than we uh, anticipated, but um, again, thank you for the opportunity. And I don't know, Kiana, did you want to say a few words? Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for participating the, uh, today. So even though it looks like there's no uh, current questions. If you do have a question later that you think of, uh, please feel free to email or even call their office um, and they have their email listed on there. Um, but if you're, if you're not sure, it's info at namisummit.org um, and then their phone number, which is listed on the PowerPoint right here. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone again for your participation today and please have a good rest of your afternoon. Thank you.